Good morning and welcome to my how to start a business webinar. Um, I'm with the Small Business Development Center through Pittsburgh State University and um, what I'm located actually in Block 22 in downtown Pittsburgh, Kansas on 4th and Broadway. So welcome anybody that is out there in Facebook world that is having to pop on and listen to me this morning. Um, I appreciate it. So um, today we're just going to cover um, kind of the basics on a little bit higher level of how to start a business. Um, so if you um, are interested in this presentation um, after the fact, um, you can send me an email um, at D as in dynamite, Clark, C-L-A-R-K at pittstate.edu. And I also wanted to say that anything that is underlined in the PowerPoint is clickable. So it, it is pretty beneficial for you to reach out and get this PowerPoint because there's things that are clickable that you can go to that will help be very helpful for you. So I just want to start off by um, talking about when you start a business, you want to think um, whether it's a product or a service that you are offering, is your product or service unique enough to be able to sell? Um, if it's not unique, how are you going to get people to purchase your product or service? Um, what are you going to do to make it stand out from other similar items or services? The next thing you want to think about is, is there going to be a demand or is there a market for your product or service? And if not, can you create a demand? And what does that look like? Um, another thing is, does your product or service have good margins? So what I mean by a margin is if you take the total cost of your product um, that you are purchasing it for, then um, what you're going to sell it for, and then the in-between or cost is your margin. So if you purchase something for a dollar and you're selling it to your clients for two dollars, then your margin is a dollar. And so that would be a pretty good margin. Um, so we definitely want to look at that. And then what experience or ability or skills do you possess that are going to enable you to sell the product or service that you are trying to sell? Um, and if you don't have certain skills, are you able to obtain them? So an example that I always use is um, uh, Drop the H Brewing Company here in Pittsburgh, Kansas. Um, Mark McLean, the owner, he um, wanted to start a brewery and he wanted to do um, the uh, fired pizzas in the kiln. And so he actually went and studied um, with, with two different people, one on how to make on how to brew beer and the other one on how to do the wood fired pizzas. So if you don't have the skills and abilities, can you get them and what the what's the cost of that going to be? So lots of different things to start off um, just thinking about a product or service and what type of opportunities there are. So the second thing that I'm going to talk about is these five steps in the loan process. So step one, um, we're going to talk about financing your business. Um, then we're going to talk about business plans and cash flow projections. And then how to um, go to a bank and what that process would look like. Um, I've taken this um, screenshot actually directly off of our website. Um, so you can click on this website and I'll take you there and has lots more information than I'm going to present to you today. Okay, so under financing your business. Um, and I have a, have a, 
have a note down here that the links on this page, they won't take you to a website, but they will download as a PDF. And then obviously you can just go up to your downloads and open them. So loans, um, grants, personal savings, friends, relatives, that's your first kind of um, all different types of financing options are available. I will say that grants are a little bit hard to come by, especially if you are a for-profit business. Um, and the grant world um, is very broad and it's kind of hard to find the right grants. Um, the SBDC, we don't look for grants, but if you find a grant, then we um, can help you with obviously your business plan and your cash flow projections. So most people start their small businesses with grants, or I mean, I'm sorry, with loans. So we're going to focus here on a minute for how business loans are evaluated. And they are evaluated um, with the six C's. So the first C being capital. The bank wants to know how much of your own funds are you willing to invest or how much can you invest? Um, the bank is usually going to want 10 to 20% of whatever your total project cost is. They're going to want you to put in that much. Um, so that doesn't necessarily have to be hard cash, um, but some type of asset, um, whether that be your house, putting your house up for collateral or a vehicle or land or whatever it may be. So the second C is collateral, which I kind of already just hit on. Um, so um, they are going to want you to fill out a personal financial statement. And so they know how much um, collateral that you have. Um, and they will use that as a guarantee on a loan. The third C is credit score. And lenders use your personal credit score as a measure of your character and how well you pay your bills on time. Um, Basically, they use that score to say how reliable that you're going to be in, in paying back your loan amount. And I will go over um, credit scores. Well, let's just go ahead and flip, bring this up. Okay, so I am not going to read all this below, but um, as a general rule, banks usually want to see your credit score at 680, 680 or above in order to get a loan. So if you are below that, um, I suggest that you use Credit Karma, um, which is right here on the screen and it is clickable. Um, if you use Credit Karma, that is a what we call a soft pull and that will not affect your credit. So sometimes if people are wanting to start a business, we have to start with their credit score um, and try to build their credit score up before we can even um, work on getting a loan, which is okay because um, as you're building your credit up, we can be working on your business plan and cash flow projections. Okay, the fourth C is capacity. And this um, capacity is just the lenders trying to determine if you can manage your loan payment, which again goes back to your credit score. Um, and this is where the three-year cash flow projections come in. So what is your capacity going to be able, um, after all your personal things are taken care of, what's your capacity to be able to pay that loan back? Uh, the fifth C is conditions. Uh, lenders want to understand the conditions of your business, the industry that your business is in, um, and the economy to understand whether current conditions of your business will continue as they are. Are they going to worsen? 
or are they can going to improve? So what we do to help our clients with that, we pull an industry report. So our clients can become familiar with the industry and this also helps um, the lender um, become a little familiar with the industry. And then the last C is character. So your lenders need to believe that a business owner, that as a business owner, that you are a reliable um, individual that can be depended on to repay your loan. Um, they will also look at thing, things like what's your educational history, what's your business background, um, and then what your experience is in selling the product or service that you are trying to sell. Oops. Oh my, sorry about that. Okay. Step two is writing your business plan. And they say that business plans are four times more successful when they are written down. And you can see I have um, a business plan template uh, link here for you and then a video walkthrough. These are two things that I always start out with a client. Um, the business plan template just gives you um, an idea of what you need to put in a business plan. And the video walkthrough is literally, um, my boss, Randy Robinson, is literally walking you through the process step by step, step by step. So we have found these two in combination to be um, for, for our clients. And it's, under, it's important to remember that all your business plan is, you're just telling the story of why you want to start a business um, what you are going to, to do, um, whether that being a service or a, um, a product that you're selling, what experience that you have um, that, that is going to assist you in getting a small business started. Um, the Small Business Development Center won't write your plan for you, but we will um, edit it and assist you in the process along the way and try to help you um, gather any information that you may not have. A business plan is also going to force you to um, think about your business structure. Um, so who and, it, and who your competitors are, um, how you're going to market your product or service, so what kind of advertising you're going to need to do, and many other things that are going to be important for you to figure out how your business is going to be profitable. So all those things are listed out in the business plan template and they kind of force you to think about those things. Okay, so I talked about business structure, and that's one of the most important uh, decisions when you start a business is how you're going to structure it. So I'm just going to talk briefly about these three main types um, that most people hear about and talk about. And the first one being a sole proprietorship or sole proprietor. Um, that's also known as doing business as. Um, you do not need to file um, a file your business with the state of Kansas if you are a sole proprietor. You will not have a business checking account if you are a sole proprietor, um, more than likely. Um, so a sole proprietor also, the, biz, the type of business structure that you pick will also um, have an impact on your taxes. So um, I, the Small Business Development Center, we try not to steer you in one direction on how to choose your business structure. We feel like um, CPAs or attorneys are more um, competent in that area. But if you do want to set up an LLC, um, that is something that I can actually um, help you with. Um, and then the last one, it, there is a corporation 
and um, that is a separate legal entity um, that has three different types of groups of people. You would have shareholders, you have directors, and that you have officers. So the one that I the ones that I see most for a small business getting started are sole proprietors or an LLC. And an LLC, um, those are getting to be a little more popular because um, with an LLC, that protects your personal assets. So if somebody sued your business, then it puts a line between your business and your personal assets. And um, I'm going to talk about in the next slide a little bit more about the pros and cons of an LLC since that's the most popular one that I deal with. So the pros and cons. So as I already said, the pro um, limited liability um, protection from your personal assets, um, pass through taxation. Um, so you don't have to file if you are a one owner LLC, you will just file your income on your personal taxes. So there's not a separate um, tax statement that you have to file for a one owner LLC. Um, because typically the LLC um, does not pay taxes for itself. So the income or losses are passed on. That's what we mean by pass through. They're passed through to the personal income of the owner. Um, another thing, the LLC um, doesn't have any residency or citizenship restrictions. And one of the most advantageous aspects of the of the LLC is that it is versatile when it comes to tax status. So it can be treated as a taxable entity if you want it to. So according to the IRS, an LLC by default is federally taxed as a partnership if you were had more members than just one. Um, or as a sole proprietor if you're a single member. But if you're an LLC, you can elect to be taxed as a C or an S corporation at any time that the members so choose. So it gets a little confusing and that's why we suggest that you need to work with a CPA to make sure that you know the benefits of being tax using the pass through taxation or do you want to have your LLC tax as a corporation? Um, a flexible profit distribution. Um, the net income and profits of the LLC may be allocated to members in different proportions. Um, based upon their percentage of ownership in the LLC. Um, so that's what it means by flexible profit, profit distribution. You don't have to um, give uh, the same profit to every owner. Um, LLCs are also subject um, to annual filing requirements. Um, which is down here, I have um, that the annual report is $55, um, but that is pretty low cost. Um, the cost to start an LLC is $166, and that is a state charge, and you can do that all online, and um, you can come into my office, or we can do a Zoom, and I can get you an LLC set up. Um, usually, I do um, an LLC and an EIN, which we'll talk about a little bit later, and I can get you a Kansas retailer sales tax ID if you are selling products or services that need to be taxed, all three of those things in about an hour. Okay, so moving on to the cons of an LLC. 
Um, although we listed the pass through taxation as a pro, um, it can also be a disadvantage. Um, oftentimes the taxes that are passed through and reported as personal income of LLC members will be higher than if they would have been taxed at a corporate level. So again, just another good reason to go to make sure that you have a CPA. Um, usually, um, if a member departs an LLC, then the LLC it needs to be terminated. Um, and that's just a, a step, um, that a form that we have to fill out. And it's not hard, it's just another step. Um, so this is unlike a corporation where if you had a member um, or if you had a shareholder come and go, the corporation still exists um, regardless of people coming in and out. So and banking, the reason we list banking as a con is sometimes um, banks may charge higher fees for business accounts versus personal accounts. So if you were a sole proprietor, you wouldn't have a business account, um, but if you're an LLC, you would have. So um, again, the cost to register with the state of Kansas to get your LLC is $166. And then every year after that, it's just $55. Um, and that is, they're asking you to um, file your annual report, which takes a couple minutes to do. So when you come in and you think that you want an LLC, you need to know um, what you want the name of your business to be and then what you want, if you how you want to be taxed, what you want the tax structure to look like. Um, and then you also need to be able to um, access your email um, because when I'm sitting with you doing that, um, there's things that I have that are sent to your email address and then you need to forward them back to me. So you need to make sure that you have a phone that can access email or that we can access your email on a computer. Okay, step three, um, financial projection info sheet. Um, so along with a business plan, you will have what we call financial projections or cash flow projections, they mean the same thing. And this is going to help you figure out all your revenue streams and all your cost to make sure that your business venture is going to be profitable. Um, it, it will help you once we fill out this financial projection info sheet, it will help you figure out how long it's going to take before your business um, is profitable and um, how much uh, capital, working capital that you may need um, to start your business. So a lot of beneficial information. It will also help us figure out the exact loan amount that you're going to need because you don't want to take too much, but you want to make sure and take enough. So that's kind of a balance. So this financial projection info sheet, which is clickable, um, has a list of items that um, utilities, uh, uh, what are your costs of goods sold going to be? What are you going to have to pay in labor? All kinds of things. Okay, if you are purchasing a business or selling a business, um, then we are going to work with you to get three years of historical financials um, from the borrower um, or from the business that you're purchasing from or um, vice versa. So, um, and also when you're purchasing a business or when you're starting a business, either one um, or selling either, any of those three options, the bank is going to want uh, a personal financial statement filled out, um, which is something else um, that I can give you a copy of just so you can have an idea of what they're going to be asking for.
the bank it usually is the one that gives you those um, personal financial statements because they have a certain one that you want they want you to fill out um, but I have an example so if you've not filled one out before um, and you're just curious to see what what you need to get together um, I can send that to you as well okay so after we have the business plan written and the cash flow projections, um, then you will come back to me and we will review it together and we will make sure that it passes the smell test and that um, we will look at the industry that your business is in and we will make sure that, um, that you're in line um, with what the industry standards are. So here is my email. Um, dclark at pittstate.edu. Um, so I said that earlier, but it's here on the screen now. So make sure you take note of that, especially if you want me to email um, you this presentation. Okay, and the last step is um, the fun step or kind of the nerve wracking step, I guess. And this is where you are going to set up a meeting with um, your bank or whoever you're loaning money from um, the SBDC. We also um, are familiar with um, several counties um, have e-communities, which is gap financing. So if your bank won't give you the entire amount, um, we can go back to the e-community and see if we can get some help from them. Um, there's also the Southeast Kansas Prosperity Foundation that is gap financing that loans money. And the Southeast Kansas Regional Planning Commission is another um, gap financing lender that we can use here in Southeast Kansas. So I personally cover 11 counties. Um, so I go all the way up to Lynn County and all the way down to Montgomery County. I'm four up and three over is kind of what I have. Um, so if you don't are not in that area, I can definitely get you to um, the advisor that is in your area. So it doesn't matter where you're listening, even if you're not in Kansas, there's SBDCs all over um, the United States. Okay, so I talked a little bit about an EIN uh, when I was talking about um, coming in and getting your LLC. So EIN, I just wanted to mention real quick here what it is. So an EIN is I say it's like a uh, it's like a social security number for your business. Just like every person has their own social security number. So EIN stands for employer identification number. Um, but even if you don't have employees, it you still need an EIN if you're an LLC. Or if you want a business bank account, the bank is going to ask you for your EIN. On the right hand side here, an EIN is also known as a federal tax ID and a TIN, which is a tax identification number. So don't let that confuse you. They all mean the same thing. How can you get one? The IRS. Um, you can get it online and it is free. And usually when I are, usually I just, when I'm getting people their LLC, I also get them the EIN because it's just, um, it's just a pretty quick process. And it just, um, I'm able to just get all three things and kind of knock them out. Um, so do you need one? If you have employees, you for sure need an employer identification number. Even if you're a sole proprietor, you will need an EIN if you have employees. Um, an EIN kind of also helps you make a look a little more like you're a more legitimate business as does an LLC. Um, so uses down here, you need it for a business bank account. You need it if you're hiring employees and um, you'll need it on for reporting your taxes. Okay. 
So what other kinds of registrations, licenses, and permits will you need? So there's no really one-stop shop to tell you all these things, which is why it's important that you use an SBDC advisor so we can kind of help you walk through this process. So um, sales tax is a big one, so that's why I have that picture up there. Um, so if you're, again, selling anything um, or you have a service that you are providing that is required to be um, to have sales tax. I have a sales tax code that we can look at just to make sure um, if, if we're not 100% sure because I am definitely not all up on sales tax um, on what you have to pay sales tax on and what you don't. So if there's any question, um, I can look at the sales tax handbook. I can also provide that to you. Um, and then the payroll taxes, um, obviously, if you have employees, you will need to have pay payroll taxes. So we talk about how to set that up appropriately and what um, software you may use to um, make that easier for you. Um, some other permits that you may need, um, you may need a city business license in order to um, do business in a city. Um, there may be some city or counting zoning um, uh, things that you need to be aware of. Um, you may need, if you're doing construction on a building, you may need a building permit um, from the city or county. Um, so lots of different uh, registrations. Um, another big one is liquor license. And also, if you are preparing food, you need to have a uh, some type of a food establishment license, um, depending on what type of food you're doing and where you're selling it, who you're selling it to. Um, if you're selling it at a farmer's market, there's some different regulations than if you're selling it from a storefront. Um, so all kinds of questions that I get asked about, um, do I have to pay Kansas sales tax? Do I have to pay employee withholding tax? Do I have to pay any federal taxes, which would be the 940 and the 941, these taxes, this picture here on the screen. And I can help you um, set these taxes up and make sure that you're paying them on time and so that you don't get in trouble because unfortunately they're all paid at different times, um, it seems like, so. Okay, so the next thing, um, as an entrepreneur, you know that you are going to wear a lot of hats. So you're going to produce your item or sell your service. You're going to be the owner. You're going to deal with HR issues if you have employees. Um, you're going to handle payroll. You're going to be the one that is advertising or the marketing person. So you may be very good at some of these items, but what we find is that most people are good at selling or producing their item, but they may be weak in another area. So whatever area that is for you, make sure you recognize that and then you hire or contract somebody to pick up um, whatever it is that you are weak at. So it is very common for um, small business owners to be a little weak in actually like keeping track of their income and expenses and then using that balance sheet and profit and loss to actually make business decisions. So we can play a role in that. Um, it's also important, we say, when you start a business to have a team of employees around you, meaning having a good CPA, having some other business owners that are already in business that you can bounce some ideas off of. Um, there's lots of forums out there for really um, specific types of businesses that are helpful. Um, so lots of times small business owners are good at their craft, but they're not good at the business side of things. So that's why this software slide is so important. Um, 
I would say 85% of the market uses QuickBooks. Um, I happen to be a QuickBooks Pro Advisor, and so I can help you get your business set up using QuickBooks. Um, you can pay payroll through QuickBooks. You can um, print any type of report that you may need um, for QuickBooks if you want to see. Um, you can invoice out of QuickBooks. You can keep track of who hasn't paid their invoices. You can look and see what, what vendors you're paying the most, um, all kinds of different reports that you can pull. Um, the second thing I have on here is you also need some way to keep track of inventory. And why QuickBooks does have um, an inventory system, I believe that there are other ones out there that are more user friendly and maybe not as costly. Um, so I just threw two up here, Square and Clover, which both of those um, talk to QuickBooks. So we can pull in the data from both of those um, into QuickBooks. And then another thing that you, if you have employees, um, home base is an app that I have a couple clients that are using um, that track people's hours and then I pull that home base into Square and then I pull the Square into QuickBooks. So it's kind of a process of pulling things. I suggest that you talk to other business owners that are in your business to see what they are using um, there's no, no need to recreate the wheel, obviously, so whatever people are using in your industry is probably what you want to try to stick with. A lot of these point-of-sale systems and QuickBooks, they'll let you do free for 30 days if you want to test it out, or they'll do a demonstration for you, so definitely take um, advantage of that, but software you do have to pay for it, but it does make your life a, a lot easier in the end and can help you be more successful. So um, I'll ask if there's any questions. I'm not 100% sure um, on Facebook Live if there's a way to um, ask questions. Michaela, is there a way for people to ask questions out there in Facebook world? I can't tell. Um, okay. I've been looking at it. So <laughs> okay. I guess well, worst case scenario, they can email you, right? Yes. So um, I'll flip to my last slide here that does have my email on it. And um, thank you for listening in. Um, I know that's a little bit longer of a Facebook Live than maybe you're used to, um, but just hits the highlights on how to start a small business. So I would welcome um, you to email me at dclark at pittstate.edu if you have any questions or if you would um, like a copy of this presentation. And I hope you have a great day.